actually all these things regarding the structure and management of conversation that goes on in a particular context and uh, adjacency, adjacency pairs, the performance of rather co-performance of social actions, all these things were discussed to understand whether there is some relationship between conversation analysis and gender. That is the focus of this course throughout. Now we see in this module uh, what happens. CA tells us which part of our speech is doing gender and which is neutral. It considers gender if relevant to the ongoing talk. Now we, the conversants in other words, they never enter the talk with gender assumptions. Gender ideology assumptions, they don't have any role here. But when they talk about gender, if it is relevant, then their talk can have some influence of gender. In other words, when gender is noticed, referred to explicitly in the talk, then you can see that here CA has relationship with gender. Otherwise, there is no relevance of gender, color, age, and other social categories like this in CA because you know these things come in background, background of the speakers. But in CA, this background has no meaning, in uh, has no role in deciding meaning of social actions and conversational actions being co-performed by the communicants. However, when we notice, when we see explicit reference to some, something that relates with gender, then here gender is involved. Let's see uh, in the following uh, slides how this happens. But before that, we know CA challenges the view that every conversation is colored by gender, our stereotypes, our gender order. From this, that gender is involved when only it is noticed. It is explicitly involved. Otherwise, it has no role. So it shows one, one thing that is very important that we should never approach every conversation from the point of view of gender or from gender stereotypes. How do we know gender noticing? We take gender as conversational action or function. First of all, we assume that gender is also a function like invitation, like question, as we discussed in adjacency pair. So again, we think that gender is also a conversational action like that. And it is also co-performed. If so, it will be performed through sequence of utterances, which are here called noticing series. The term is different, otherwise the meaning and role is the same. Instead of calling it adjacency pair, we this time are calling it noticing series because this is our focus. If we notice it, if we find it out that it is noticed, then we can relate our talk with gender. The series consists of, now what is in this? Number one, first of all, the participant indirectly, very slightly, refer to some gender activity, peripheral mention of that, marginal mention of that. And then as the conversation moves on, the second thing is gender noticing. Here the gender talk is prominent. And after that, 
whatever follows gender talk dominates this is called gender relevance extended so this is how during talk during conversation we find out where gender is for example as i uh, said earlier we would see its example how it happens now let's see this dialogue again this is transcription it is uh, in a way copy of the real speech so that's why some transcription symbols are involved here in uh, round brackets you see the time and when you see a colon like marks it is uh, a lengthening of sound it is a kind of stress and uh, if uh, you double colon symbols so it is doubling the stress and you prolong the sound in other words and uh, see uh, mary first conversant and second is liz mary says look in then a short pause less than one second it's at the very top of one of those bear ha ha bushes there this repetition of ha ha shows breathiness breathiness means when you uh, guess that shows your emotional condition so sometimes in emotions we guess we release more air from our mouth it is shown in this in this transcription uh, by uh, using h or repeating it now liz answers to mary oh then there is long pause mary again is i've lost him someone was over there he saw liz her answer is very tactful very meaningful that as she knows that mary has uh, definitely no taste some partner some person some male friend etc up to this point the mention of gender was very very indirect peripheral after that liz again asks question pardon mary i've lost the one that was singing he was he was so plain now here overlap mary was talking and during her talk after that you see square bracket starts it shows that her ans- her statement was not complete it was interrupted by liz from he was singing onward and it goes on up to uh, the second and then third line now see he was he he was so plain wasn't he again pause more than one second i am saying he it might be a she ha 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 this uh, this is a kind of laugh after that you see equal sign equal sign shows that when there is no pause between one utterance and the other utterance and they are exactly uh, with uh, adjacent with each other there is no pause lack of pause is shown by this equal sign now this is in the beginning of this utterance that was at the end of the previous utterance it shows they latch on each other as we uh, latch on doors similarly these utterances latch on each other mary says if it sings it's he definitely then it was a male only she thinks that male sing in a such kind of environment now here the gender involves prominently here gender is noticed and beyond that the whole talk is about that he this is gender extension gender relevance we conclude 
with the help of this task and talk, CA provides a better approach to analyze conversation being gender relevant or not. How CA does it? It assumes that gender is also a social action. It may be or may not be present in conversation.